We are here with Tim Rosso, the owner of the new art gallery here in Ocean Shores. Tim, why don't you tell us a bit about the art gallery? Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Uh, basically, my wife got tired of having all my frames and all my paintings in the living room, and so we went looking for a place to uh, have a frame shop and just for me to do my frames. And this is what it turned into, Tim Rosso Watercolor and Associates. And uh, we've got uh, six different artists that uh, are working with me and uh, lots of different media. And we're really happy to be here in Ocean Shores. And uh, we've had a lot of, lot of comments today. People just simply saying, we're so glad you did this in Ocean Shores. We, we've tried to do kind of an upscale gallery. Uh, although we've got art that's priced for pretty much every budget from $10 to $5,000. So um, we hope you'll come down and, and uh, take a look at our gallery. I notice that behind you are a couple paintings that you made, one of Lady Washington and the other is obviously from the jetty. How did you get the waves to stand still long enough for you to paint them like that? Well, I was, uh, I was a Lutheran minister for 30 years, so I've got some connections. Uh, yeah, the Lady Washington, uh, I just couldn't resist painting that. I saw a couple photos online. Most of, my, most of my stuff is done from my own photos, although there are some great photographers around Ocean Shores. And uh, this uh, uh, young contemplative woman on the jetty with the storm coming in, that's actually based on a photo by Skip Radcliffe. So... Uh, Many of us here in the studio use uh, lots of the local photographers for our inspiration. Thank you. We are here with some of the other artists here at the gallery. With me now is Sharon Goschel. Hello. I'm a, you know, my work here is glass fusion. And uh, I started glass, I started being an artist when I started college. And then I was in watercolor oils and I found glass fusion about 15 years ago and have never been able to go back to any other glass or art medium. You have some beautiful pieces here. How long does it take you to make some of this glass fusion art? A piece like this, this takes me about uh, three to four days. Um, First of all, I've got a, all, all these pieces are made individually. I have like four kilns, and some of them form different functions. And then I, all these pieces, I have bins that I make. I spend hours. And then I put them together like a, a oil artist would paint. I put glass in it instead. <laughs> so I pound. I start out with a, a two by three foot glass, and then I chop it down, I whittle it down. And that here, that's the background on the, this here one, which is called Blue Flowers. That's all gra uh, powder, uh, not powder, but pounded glass. Mm -hmm. And so those are chips that I've pounded to make that. And then others are cut out and uh, different things I do with the glass and I put it together and then fuse it. Thank you. And how is it fused? Uh, well, I... Um, on this one here, after I put it together, then I put it into a kiln. And now kilns now the days are all computerized. And then I put in my formula, my schedule. And this has five different schedules. And it'll start out with maybe uh, 300, it goes up in one hour. It'll go up to 1,000 degrees. It'll stay there for maybe a half an hour. And then it goes to the next level. So it goes up and then it comes down until it's uh, cooled. And this piece here, uh, that takes me about, that takes about 12 hours, 12 to 14 hours to fully cook and cool down. And I have some pieces that take almost 24 hours. It depends how thick it is. The thicker it is, the slower you have to cook it. And that's after you've done all the prep work, which can take 
Well, it's going to take a couple of days on the prep work, if not more. And some of them I've already done in the past, and I've put them. So there's days that it takes to make all those different creatures and other little effects in, in uh, this one here, or any of them. And then my earrings, there are two layers, and I use a, the shiny part is the dichroid. And that dichroid is what makes it shine, and that is a metallic that is compatible with, with my art glass. And that's what the rocket ships have for their shield. Uh, it's that type of metallic. And then I just combine different colors and stuff. We are here with Linda Nolte, another featured artist at the gallery. Hello. Hi, Linda. Talk to me about your watercolors and, the, and nice frames, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, watercolor is a passion of mine, and I, ha I love animals, so I paint animals, uh, pet portraits, animals just in nature. So people can contact you to get a painting of their dog or their cat, or in this case, their lamb. Yes, or fish. I've painted uh, pet fish before, birds, doesn't matter if it's a pet. You can paint it. <laughs> you seem to like the sea turtles. I do. Sea turtles and living in the ocean, by the ocean here. Uh, seals, any of the uh, wildlife around the ocean I'll be painting a lot of. So, How long have you been doing this? As long as I can remember. As a kid I painted with watercolors and through school and that. and. Um, 10 years, uh, about 10 years, 15 years, seriously. And you're still doing the watercolors. Yes, I am, yes. <laughs> and I live by the water. <laughs> we are here with Titus Kapoman, and you're one of the youngest artists uh, that I find here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you and uh, introduce myself in my tribal language. Uh, greetings, uh, my name is uh, Titus Kapoman. I come from the Quinault Indian Nation, and uh, my traditional name is Totla Laishan. And um, it's really important for us to uh, explain who we are in our tribal language. Uh, I'm a Quinault tribal artist, and um, I've been invited by Tim. Uh, I met him at one of the Saturday markets in Seabrook. And uh, he exchanged uh, a couple of my designs for one of his prints, so that was our relationship. And uh, he, he allowed me to display some of my artwork here, and um, I'm really blessed for that opportunity. But um, these couple designs right here are my father, Randy Kapoman. My father, Randy Kapoman, was uh, one of the the you know one of the most notorious artists in the Pacific Northwest. Um, his name goes all the way across the country. He has uh, artwork in the Pentagon. He has artwork in our nation's capital, and um, I just got some artwork in our in our capital too. Um, I forgot the the senator's name, but I gifted him one one of my crab prints. And uh, but my father, um, his his uh, prints. Uh, when he passed away in 2008, he uh, we ran out of prints. We sold out of them. But when he passed away, we wanted to keep his artwork alive, not only just to to, to continue his artwork, but. Uh, we wanted to continue uh, getting his artwork out there so people can look at this artwork and say, oh, okay, that's what Quinault artwork looks like. So we need to uh, you know, look at his artwork as guidance. So that's another reason why I wanted to continue his, uh, his artwork. We got a little stamp uh, with his signature so we can continue to make uh, you know, legit prints. And uh, being that we're his children, we're, we're able to do that. So um, this one is called uh, Companion. This is uh, the Thunderbird and the Canoe. Uh, the Thunderbird was known as our as our guardian and um, our watcher, and this was our main transportation. Is the canoe? We, we were we were known as the Cedar people, and uh, this was our our way of transportation. Is the canoes? We traveled all the way up from the coast, uh, you know, from for hunting and you know bartering and trading. So this was our transportation. This was our our watcher, the Thunderbird, and uh, this one is uh, the um, spiritual elegance. Uh, my father did one of his last designs before he uh, finished his chemotherapy and passed away. Um, this was one of his last designs, and sp spiritual elegance uh, kind of just explains um, where my dad was in uh, in his in his journey with uh, with his creator. 
and uh, my father was a, was a Christian was a Christian man and uh, this was his uh, you know this was one of his his ways of talking to the people and um, our communities so um, my dad has a lot a lot of his artwork you know is, is pretty connected with uh, his spiritual beliefs and uh, his journey so and uh, these, these these frames are made by Tim and uh, he's my new partner so and these paddles uh, this is a uh, a yellow cedar, red cedar, red cedar, red cedar. Um, they're based off my uh, traditional name, which is the sea wolf. That's the majority of the designs that I do are sea wolves. And uh, that's what my, my Indian name means. It means uh, a man who transformed into a wolf and hunted whales. And uh, he's also known as the ocean provider. And uh, that's, that's what a lot of my designs are based off is the sea wolf. This is the salmon and the eagle. This is the screaming eagle, and this is another sea wolf, just uh, in different colors. But I carved all of these and painted all of them. Here in the Pacific Northwest, when a new art gallery opens, of course it's not a ribbon that is cut. It's Sitka spruce. All right, here we go, everybody. First, I want to thank my wife, Phyllis. She has worked really, really hard. Yay! And Leslie has been her right-hand man, and all of our associate artists are wonderful. We've got a great team. Thank you. And then this is uh, Michael Johnson and Matthew Johnson and the Johnson family, my wood miller, and they provided all of the wood that's in there. So uh, let's let's do the ribbon cutting. Up or down? Oh, we want to go down, don't we? We're going to go down. <laughs> all right. We are here with Laura Malikoff, famous artist of the Pacific Northwest. It's so good to see you again, Laura. It's nice to see you too again. Tell us about the painting behind us. This is called Remnants of a Bygone Era, and it is from a photograph that I took in Wrangell, Alaska at the old mill site. I know a lot of Lumbertown kids that lived by the whistle, six, noon, six, and midnight. You better be home for dinner at the six o'clock whistle. Well, the mill had been sold all of the, you know, in the 30 years that I'd been gone from home. And this is all that was left were these tugboats that were just chained to the beach and sitting in the water rotting. And it was so sad to see that era of my life and so many people's lives just corporate loss. They just let them sit there and sink. But it was such a telling picture of what used to be and what is now. And so it took me about five years to paint. I fooled myself into starting. I thought, this will be easy. <laughs> and whenever I say it's going to be an easy painting, it takes years. But it's an oil painting. There's probably about 32 different layers of color and transparencies. And it's only shown one other time at Grace Harbor College in 2019. And then COVID hit and there were no shows. <laughs> so when Tim called and he asked me if I would be interested in being an associate, I was very honored. And he has put together this very, my mother used to call it top drawer, where you keep all the good stuff, you know? And everything he's chosen, he did with care, he did with research, he asked people's opinions about the color of the walls. When he asked me about the color of the walls, first thing I said, dark, neutral, gray. I said, please don't do peach or sage green. <laughs> We're not doing grandma's bedroom. We're doing an art gallery, you know? And he has done this very high end. It's just so amazing for Ocean Shores to have just such a quality gallery for the local artists to show in. And you have another painting over here of a pod of orcas. Called Curiosity which is exactly what they're doing. <laughs> I love the sea life. Um, I've spent hours of my life watching sea otters and river otters and orcas. I even like the sea lions. I just don't want to get close to them. They do smell and they are kind of violent. <laughs> but I do really enjoy uh, orcas. I've had them come up when I've been out on uh, 
out on the water in Alaska in a skiff, and I've had him come up and literally bump my boat to look at me. And you don't realize how big those eyes are until they're that close. And then you realize how big their teeth are. And then you get nervous about being in the skiff. Yeah. <laughs> and the little black cap chickadee right behind you. Now that is a print of an original painting, and it's done on canvas, and it's gallery wrapped around a frame. And uh, yeah, I love chickadees. And when they come into town, I'm sitting outside of my phone taking pictures of them and throwing them food so they'll keep coming back. But yeah, the little black-headed chickadees on the coast are just, they're so little and they're so cute. And, uh, and of course, there's the raven. And uh, we're all used to those guys. They're everywhere. And you've got a, a landscape up there, a cloudscape. Well, several, well, quite a few years ago, my son decided he was going to choose between University of Washington scholarships or Bozeman, Montana, Montana State University. Now, here's a kid that doesn't like snow and he doesn't like heat, but he wanted to move to Bozeman, Montana. So he did. He went to college. This is a view. That Kids do what they will do. Yep, and you got to just let them do it. So he decided he wanted to move back to the Pacific Northwest. He missed, he missed our ocean air. I knew that was going to happen. And I took a picture on our way back in the U-Haul. And I went home and I painted it. My cloud obsession had begun. Tim, so if someone wants to come look at the paintings and the other artwork, or if they want to find out what the place is like, how do they get here? What is the contact information? So we're on uh, Chance a la Mer. Uh, we're in between the post office and the Sunset Pharmacy. We're in the old Ace Building. That's how most people know us. And uh, uh, just off of Point Brown, uh, just off of the traffic circle, we're also going to have lots of sandwich signs out on the streets uh, directing people here. And you can find me at timrossowatercolor.com.